please give a huge round of applause for Courtney Shane Williams. Relax, relax, everyone. You guys are, you guys are doing good. It's good to be in Seattle, man. This is, this is definitely the place I wanted to record my album, man. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to, uh, to be out, man. It's nice to be out. The pandemic, I guess it's still going, I'm not sure. I live in Florida, so it's really hard to know when it stopped. It stopped for me about a year and a half ago, so. I appreciate you guys trying to hold out, but you know, we can't help you. It's one of those things. Florida's like an anchor on your foot. We're going down, ladies and gentlemen. You know what my favorite part of the pandemic was? The very beginning of the pandemic. Remember the beginning of the pandemic, like when America cared about black people for three weeks? It was, it was a magical time, remember that? Oh, it's fantastic. Protests everywhere, everybody. Black Lives Matter, oh. Right? It's that people were calling my phone, apologizing to me. I swear. Random people, hey, Courtney, I just want to apologize. How did you get this number? Hey, well, I'll, I'll explain it later. There's three other black friends I got to apologize to, man, so I'll explain it later. It's weird, very beginning of the book. Everybody had a statement. You had to have a statement to live in this country. Ben and Jerry's ice cream released a statement for black, they sell ice cream, dog. Really? I like black people, I ain't releasing no statement, you understand? It's weird. Netflix, Netflix had a Black Lives Matter section on Netflix. That's why black people are getting shot, because not enough people have seen Pootie Tang. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some weird approach is going out. I was watching the pro. I went down to the protests. I saw it up in close and per. You know what I found out at the protests? Uh, white people have an incredible ability to take pepper spray to the face. <laughs> Y'all are some real superheroes. Man, that was incredible. I mean, we spent all our time watching the white people protest. Like, how are they doing this, man? They just walking, no mask on or anything. They just walking through the smoke like Avenger characters. This is incredible. <laughs> Why don't we let them do the heavy lifting and we'll just start stealing? What do y'all think about that? Uh, started looting. <laughs> incredible. I saw a white guy do a backflip at the protest. It's like, hey man, what part of the struggle is that? He walked Black Lives Matter, bro. He walked up to Black Lives Matter. He hit me, Black Lives, with two finger guns. Dude, hit me. I was like, hey, you almost hypothetically killed me, dog. It's the most offended I've been all day. Just walk through that. That beginning was weird, because no one knew what was going on. You know, so at the beginning, you any advice I saw on I just followed Facebook's advice. Say, hey, if you get a package from Amazon, leave your package outside for 24 hours, okay? Because Bezos was dropping off the virus at the beginning of the pandemic, right? Leave the Amazon, you gotta let the COVID blow off all your packages. Make sure you're washing your groceries. You know, I was to wash, like I'm a farmer. I'm washing groceries in the kitchen, soaping down Lucky Charms. It's painful. My daughter's crying. Hey, hey, I'm saving your life right now. You understand? This is leprechaun's trying to kill us, all right? So just, I'm gonna finish with this. Make sure you pack some gloves, Courtney. You need some gloves. Oh, gloves? I'm walking around with gloves like I'm OJ. Hey, gloves in my back pocket. You pump gas, you're gonna need to put your gloves on. <laughs> They're putting on latex gloves, pumping gas. You don't want to get COVID on your steering wheel, all right? Because if you get COVID on the steering wheel, you rub your nose. Now you got a full-blown COVID situation, all right? So you got to put your hands and sanitize it, but your nose is just, you don't want all that pressure. So I got gloves and I'm ready to go. I'm soaping. I'm figuring everything out. Then, you know, the, 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 the vaccine hit the streets. That, that was a good day for me. Because that's when I just gave up on everything. Just, Let me get that, you know. Of course, all my friends all of a sudden are epidemiologists. You know? <laughs> Give me vaccine advice. Hey, Courtney, you don't know what's in that vaccine. I was, You're right. That's why I took three of them. <laughs> I, took, I took every vaccine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> If you keep showing up to CVS, they just keep poking you. That's the way it works. I started changing names. It's a real catch me if you can situation when I show up. So let me get some of that, dude. 
build up your immune system, Courtney. That's the key to the build up. I'm 37. We are done building here. You understand? <laughs> this building is finished. <laughs> this is not a building. This is a 06 Hyundai you're looking at right now. I'm just trying to make the outside look good, you know? I'm replacing everything. Not building anything. It's a weird thing. No, just just give me the facts. I don't have time. I don't have the type of health insurance where I can turn down free vaccinations. I don't know about y'all. I have health insurance. It's smoking mirrors. My deductible is like five thousand dollars. You understand? I gotta catch some biblical. It's the worst thing. I gotta come down with leprosy. It's the only way I go see the doctor. Okay? I go to a walk-in clinic as my primary care physician. <laughs> If you go to a walk-in, you're not getting healthy in a walk-in clinic. Their job is to keep you from dying in the lobby. That's the reason that they, they don't want to do paperwork, all right? It's like being taken care of by a stepdad, you know what I mean? You walk in the clinic. So I took all the vaccines. Let me tell you, any gimmick I found, on, I was doing all the advice I found. I was vegan. Oh yeah, I became vegan during the pandemic. It was like, maybe, you know, COVID's in dairy or something like that. I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> Saw a documentary on uh, Netflix about being vegan. Right after I watched Pootie Tang, I was like, let me check out what else is hurting black people on Netflix. <laughs> I found out on Netflix that 50% uh, of black people are lactose intolerant. I found that out on uh, Netflix. I've been black my whole life. I had no clue. Netflix, <laughs> they broke the news. Half the black people I will know are dying right They have no clue. I called my grandmother, I had to break the news. I was like, hey, Granny, I hope you're sitting down. You're not gonna believe what I just found out on Netflix. 50% of black people are like those. Oh, they didn't tell me either, man. Put that Klondike bar down. That is, that's tearing the community apart. I found out on the same documentary, by the way, uh, that white people are allergic to gluten. <laughs> y'all been keeping that a secret, you know what I mean? That gluten allergy is taking y'all out one by one. The <laughs> pools of dead white people everywhere from gluten. Black people get shot by the police. White people, bread. So weird, <laughs> weird thing y'all got going on. Between gluten and vaping, your community is in shambles. <laughs> Found that out on Facebook. Boy, that vaping is ravaging the kids. <laughs> Anything on Facebook. I liked it. That was it. I loved it going on the face because that's when you find out how angry people are because you couldn't leave the house. So you just had to get on the keyboard and get your muscles. Hey, I'm tired of all this. I'm leaving Facebook. That's fake. When people quit Facebook on Facebook, it's fan. <laughs> I'm leaving. This is my last post, guys. It's like I cared about the other 200 posts that were terrible. Just get out of here. That is one less birthday. I got to act like I remember, dude. <laughs> I don't really care if you leave, dude. I'm, I'm tired of the fighting. I'm only on Facebook for the fights. That's my favorite part. I like seeing my fans, friends angry. I do. I get persuaded, though, when I see that. It's because I have Facebook, Reddit. I've been in all those rooms. I wasn't even sure I was going to do comedy anymore. That's how much fun I was having. Because like, you know what I found out on Facebook? I think uh, I want to be a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> These people have a fantastic time online, dude. Everything's going great for them. I want to be a conspiracy. The problem is, uh, I don't have any theories. This is the issue. I just got conspiracies, you know what I mean? It's like I'm suspicious, but I have no motivation to find out why. It's the space I live in. Anything that makes me feel weird, I just, you know, I assume it's a bad thing. Like, I don't trust people with prepaid phones. You understand? Like, if you don't have a, a, a prepaid, I don't trust, you can't be friends with me with a prepaid phone, you know? I, I gotta be able to trust you when I turn my back. I can't do it, you got a Boost Mobile, some Metro wireless flip phone, you walk around like Inspector Gadget. What do you have a flip phone for? Walking around with a burner, what are you auditioning for the wire? What are you doing with that phone? I'm not saying you commit crime if you have a prepaid phone, but everybody commits crime has a prepaid phone, right? So, I'm not gonna interview you individually, I just condemn you all. I don't have time. I think Morgan Freeman uh, is part of the Illuminati. That's right. 
But there's no backstory of Morgan Freeman. You know? Morgan Freeman just appeared one day. You have no clue where Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman has been an old man my entire life. My entire life. You ever seen a baby picture of Morgan Freeman? You know, what does young Morgan Freeman look like? You know, I Googled baby Morgan Freeman. Look, a picture of him from Shawshank Redemption came up. You know what? It's a 75 year old baby walking around. I'm the only one concerned, apparently. That is it. I called the police on Morgan Freeman. I did. I did. I was like, I got an emergency. I, like, I paused Bruce Almighty. I got to get to the bottom of this. I got an emergency. What's the emergency, sir? So I'm looking for a baby picture of Morgan Freeman. That's the emergency. It's like, oh, we are too. What? How's this dude keep slipping through our hands? I just want to meet him now. I always have this, this idea of meeting Morgan. It's the only reason I still do comedy. Is hopefully I can get famous enough to just get in a room with him and ask him some tough questions. Thank you for showing up to the meeting, Morgan. I got a question for you. Where do you get the cream for your face, man? You have the smoothest old black man's skin I've ever seen in my life, dog. The freckles kind of throw me off. I don't know why they put those on the costumes. This <laughs> nigga move. And then he's gonna do it. Morgan Freeman's gonna do it. He's gonna pull me to the back. He's like, hey, Courtney, watch this. He's gonna unzip his face to reveal Benjamin Button. I'm gonna catch him. Brad Pitt is behind that mask, dude. I'm convinced it's everything during the pandemic. Spent so much time between being on, online and at home, that was like my whole life. I became a, a, a father uh, during, during the pandemic, which was weird. It's weird becoming a father uh, for me during the pandemic because my daughter is uh, four, you know? <laughs> I always thought I was a father, but I was never home. I was always working doing comedy. So people just took my word for it, you know what I mean? It's great. After, oh, you have a daughter? I do have a daughter. Oh, you must be, I am a great, I got a picture. Oh, do you want to see? Because if you got a picture of a baby, everybody just assumes you're good at it, right? So I'll, I'll show you a picture. I got to download it from the cloud. <laughs> I don't, it takes up memory on the phone. You know what I mean? So I download this grainy picture of my, that's my daughter right there. If you got a picture of a baby, people assume you're good at it. That's, it ain't even got to be your baby, by the way. Just throw that out there. I got an Asian baby on my phone. You know what I mean? I pull it out. <laughs> and I dare somebody to ask me questions about it. You don't think I can make an Asian baby? Really? Are you trying to get canceled right now? Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> Figure out that it's my baby right there, man. Respect me. Came a father. We, so we did all this family stuff. That's when uh, things got real, being at home a lot. That's, I remember uh, the day my life changed, my wife looked at me. She said, hey, Courtney, um, do you want to go on a power walk? What, a power walk? What, 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 you, I didn't know we could power walk, can we do that? I, just, I thought that was something old people did to keep their hips in shape. <laughs> Why are we power walk? Is that what y'all do when I'm out of town? It's like, I don't have power walking equipment, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have a walking stick. I don't own Skechers. I mean, it's like power walking. You see a black dude wearing Skechers, that dude is giving up on life, you understand? <laughs> and it's over for him. He don't want to tie his shoes no more. He, he ain't trying to run for the police. He is done. <laughs> only black dude wearing Skechers is Danny Glover. I'm convinced. It's the only one. So now I'm power walking with my family. We're bonding, social distancing on our power walk. Now, I, uh, I live in a mixed income neighborhood in, in Florida. So, you know, the one reason I like living in a mixed income neighborhood, a couple reasons. Number one, I like living around an element of danger. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something that makes your hair stand up and lets you know you're alive, you know? You hear a sound, oh, was that fireworks or gunshots? Ah, you know, let's check the mail. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the space I live in. Another reason, I like living in a mixed income neighborhood because it's very diverse. It's socially, politically, racially, super diverse neighborhood. I like that. So you have houses in my uh, neighborhoods. Some houses have a lot of kids. Some houses have no kids. And I noticed something on my power walks. People that have a lot of kids always like to let you know they have a lot of kids, right? <laughs> oh, one of the only benefits of having a lot of kids is free labor, and you get to tell other people you got them. That's it. They put signs in the grass. My kid graduated kindergarten. Oh, really? Congratulations on turning six, buddy. Apparently, that's an accomplishment in your house. 
<laughs> you got some therapy in your future, by the way. Your parents have <laughs> self-esteem issues. Come here. Kids at play drive slows. Oh, really? I got to drive slow for the... I don't usually drive based on how old people are. I don't know how y'all roll. I've never had to look for a kid. Oh, I need to know how fast I can drive. It was a whole, is that a baby right there? It's like, yeah, I got tricked. It was a Mexican baby. He had a his mustache coming in. I didn't know how old the baby was. I was driving too fast. They pulled me over. Hold that baby up for me. There's one son in my neighborhood that says, drive like your kids live here. So was, well, my kid knows how to dodge a car. So... <laughs> I'm gonna need a better reason to slow down. You should have a sign that says, drive like the police is behind you. You know what I mean? Everybody drives slow, that's the point. Another thing I noticed, if you have children, the three is, that's a good number of kids to have if you have a kid. Anything over three starts getting a little dicey. You get more than three kids, all of a sudden that minivan shows up. That, that, that's a sad day in everybody's life. You want to stay away from the minivan as long as possible. They don't even advertise minivans, by the way. You know what I mean? They, you never seen a commercial for minivans. They just show up in the driveway. That's the way it works. You see somebody driving, they're never smiling in the minivan. You know? Because there are too many people in the car. That's the reason why. Just keep it close. Two kids. That's the maximum, I think. Two. You know, because most people only have enough material to make like two good looking kids, right? And then everything after two is just a bad copy of all the good work they used to do, right? You know what I mean? Two is really the limit right there. And people will have you confused. Well, Courtney, the best decision we made as a couple is having a child. Well, you need to raise your expectations, dog. That is the easiest thing I've ever done, you know what I mean? <laughs> I wasn't even looking, I did it with my eyes closed, man. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> I've done way cooler things than having a baby. I don't take it that seriously, you know? I won $5,000 at the casino one time, right? That's way cooler than having a baby. <laughs> if you leave the show tonight and one person hands you $5,000 and the next one hands you a baby, which one would you be happier to get? <laughs> it's not the greatest thing on earth, man. So figure it out. I do have a daughter. I'm so glad to have a daughter. I, I love my daughter. You know what, uh, at the very beginning when my wife was pregnant, I wanted to have a boy. That is an ego thing. That is a man thing. Every man wants to have a boy first. It's a weird distorted mentality. Like a man, oh, I can make a Superman baby. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll train him. I'll have him eat batteries when he's like two years old. He'll be electrocuting people at the park. Everybody would think my son is dope. I'll teach them everything I know. But you don't know anything, right? So, so it's just, just be two losers living in the house, you know? Nobody can put on a doorknob, right? Everybody just, were you gonna fix that? I thought you were the man in the house. Are you fixing it? Can't fix anything? Kicking doors open? The worst. Glad I have a daughter. Because when you have kids, you end up hanging out with other people that have kids, and then you get to see little boys in action. Oh, I've seen them in action. <laughs> little boys are terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. I watch little boys play at the park. With, with my, I just watch them. For the first five years of a boy's life, all they do is try to kill themselves. <laughs> this is what they do. <laughs> They get on the tallest thing at the, it's not even a ride. They get on top of the tallest thing at the park and they jump neck first into the ground. Every Tuesday, they just keep coming back. And you can always tell the parents of little boys because those are the only parents that aren't concerned. They don't care. They're looking down, all the blood is drained from their face. It's like they just lost their job. They're just looking down. I think your son just hurt himself. Well, hopefully he did. Hopefully he did, all right? He needs a nap. Let him sit down there for a minute. He needs to sleep. My daughter, my daughter plays with a little boy outside every day in the front yard. And you know why they play outside? Because I won't let this dude in my house. That's why they play outside. I keep lying to him. I say, Hey man, we had the carpet redone. I'm sorry, you can't come in. I don't even have carpet. I just be lying to this dude. I had a carpet redone. I don't want this menace in my house, man. I saw him eat a rock one time. It was
was the crack. He ate a rock. He, I opened the blind. I just wanted to check on the kid. I opened it. He was staring inside of my house, eating a rock. He was trying to intimidate me. He was giving me one of those looks like, if you ever let me in your house, Mr. Williams, I will eat your couch. You understand? <laughs> Respect my gangster. It's like, ah. So glad I have a daughter. I remember uh, when, my, when my wife uh, uh, got pregnant, that was the craziest thing when she had a baby. Because when she first, first got pregnant, I thought, it was, uh, I thought I was having a baby, right? That's what they tell you, I'm having a baby. But then it was time to have a baby. And I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think she's going to have the baby. I'm going to eat some Jello. You know what I mean? <laughs> they let you eat Jello as long as you're in the hospital. I figured that out. I looked at my wife and said, hey, babe, I'm going to try to eat $15,000 worth of Jello. <laughs> We're going to get our money's worth one way or the other. Bring on that Jello, man. I thought I was having a baby. I did, because the first doctor's appointments you go to, they get the man all gymmed up like he's doing something. Hey, Mr. Williams, are you ready to have a baby? I was like, oh, I don't think you know how this works. Uh, I know this is a walk-in clinic. You uh, probably didn't get to that part at the University of Phoenix, but I'm a man. No, y'all are having a baby together. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? Oh, we're having a baby together. Oh, you're eating for three now. I'm sorry to break the news. We're having a baby. And then it hit me. I gotta find out how to have a baby. I never had a baby before. I need to know, what if she don't show up? I gotta have this baby by myself. I need to pull off this pregnancy. I signed up for birthing classes, I did. Oh, I used to show up early to all the classes. It's like, Mr. Williams, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Where's your wife? Oh, uh, she's parking a car. <laughs> she don't move as fast as she used to. She's kind of wobbling in the parking lot. I didn't want to be late, you know what I mean? She's not taking this baby seriously, if you ask me. She's been late to all the meetings. It's ridiculous now. I wanted to have a baby. I took all the advice. People give terrible advice, especially men. Terrible advice when you're having a child. Hey, Courtney, man, hey, watch out. Your wife, she's going to get a little irritable. Of course. There's a person growing inside of her. You understand? I get mad when there's a rock in my shoe. Imagine, imagine if that was a baby, you know? That's going to change your gait a little bit. You know what I mean? But I wanted to have a baby. I remember the night she went into labor, I'll never forget. She looked at me, she's like, hey, Courtney, I'm having a lot of pain. I was like, oh, good, good. I'm glad you're in pain. They, they, they said that we were going to have some pain. Don't worry about it. I know what to do. So I downloaded an app on my phone to time out the pain that she was in. Then I had a stopwatch. I put on my stopwatch, and I started double-checking that she wasn't lying about the pain from the phone, OK? Because if you get to the hospital and the pain's not good enough, they send you home. It makes me look bad, right? So. <laughs> I need to make sure she's suffering sufficiently, okay? So I'm making sure she's in pain. The, the pain was good enough. I was like, okay, good. Let, let's go to the hospital. So we get to the hospital, walk in, Miss Wood. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Where's your wife? Oh, she's parking the car, man. <laughs> she's been late for everything. I know what to do. Let me get two wristbands. Let's get the wristbands. You got to have a, a wristband. If you want to have a baby, just FYI. You gotta, the wristband is what identifies you to the baby. If you don't have a wristband, you don't get to take the baby home, which is convenient if you don't want the baby. But I'd work for nine months. I wasn't about to walk away from this baby, right? Let me get two wristbands, boss. A good wristband. Wife came in. I snapped her up. I'm snapping. It's time to go. They put her in the bed. They, they hook the, 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 put all these monitors on her stomach. They hook her to a machine. This is a pain machine. This machine lets me know how much pain she's in. It's, the machine is so good, I know when pain's coming before she knows pain's coming. That's how great the machine is. I'm looking, oh my, oh, whoa, there's a lot of pain coming. What, huh? Ah! That's right, stay woke. I'm running this pain machine. Locked in. The pain got so intense, at one point she got out of the bed and started walking around the room in pain. And at that point, uh, I got in the bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody should be comfortable, you know? It's a $5,000 bed, you know what I mean? I'm paying for this bed. 
I knew what to do. I've been to all the classes. I was like, hey, relax. I know what to do. I was chanting out commands. Hey, baby, you're strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're the strongest. You're, you're the strongest woman. That's you are the Black Panther. That's right. <laughs> you can do it. I yelled that in the hospital room, which is awkward because she's white. But <laughs> a script is a script. <laughs> Finally, she gets back into bed and it's time to have the child I'm watching. I called the doctor in the room. I was like, hey, just come on in. I think it's time. And I was like, oh, okay, Mr. Williams, are you ready? It's so exciting. I was like, yes, I'm ready. I was like, okay, stand over there. So I started standing over there and then I uh, put her in the, and then the baby uh, comes out, okay? And, and when the baby comes out, uh, it's not uh, quite finished yet. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's kind of lumpy and discolored, you know? Looks like I got hit by Jack Tatum, you know what I mean? <laughs> baby takes a hit coming into the world, you know? They don't even let you see the baby. There's the move. I got a glimpse because I was on the other side, but they usually they don't let you see. They, they'll scoop the baby up and they'll shield you from the back, because if you get to see the baby, you'll, you'll snap off that wristband and keep it moving. <laughs> but, hey, we've obviously messed this one up. We'll try again next summer. They're keeping this baby, you know? So they, they scoop the baby so you can't see it, and then they, they put a tent over the baby, like, like, like Monday Night Football. That's what they do. <laughs> they, they tent your baby like a concussion protocol. They immediately put your baby in a concussion protocol, and then, and then they put a hose in there, and they pressure wash your baby. They rope off the room like a crime scene, and they don't cross this line, and they pressure wash your baby. They try to make it look good, and they, they put a little hat on your baby, by the way. They don't even ask you if you want your baby to be hatted. They just throw it a hat onto the baby. You see, it's not even a full hat. It's like a little yarmulke. You know what I mean? Every baby is Jewish when it first comes out. It's just it's a weird assumption they make. They hand me my daughter for the first time, and I'm, I'm looking down at Lenny Kravitz. It was like, why they dress my daughter like a rock star? This is weird. The pressure's on. So I was looking around the room, and so uh, I kissed the baby. I was like, and then I wiped my mouth immediately. <laughs> I don't know where this baby's been. She had juice on her elbow. I was like, who has wet elbows, son? Your elbows should be dry at all times. Let me just be honest with you. I never trusted her from that day. I was like, yo, her elbows are wet, man. So we're sitting there, me and my wife with our daughter for the first time, and I'll never forget the day, that moment changed my life. The doctor looked at us and she said, hey, uh, it looks like you guys are doing good. I'm gonna go ahead and head home. I was like, hold on, uh, before you leave, um, you're forgetting the baby. Oh no, <laughs> you get to keep the baby. Oh, okay. Whoa, right now? Whoa, 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 I know we had to keep the baby right now. I, I, I thought you kept the baby to make sure we wanted the baby. I didn't know to keep the baby. When they have the baby in movies, they don't take the baby home. You, you put the baby in another room with other babies that the baby don't know. It's, it's behind bulletproof glass, you know what I mean? And, and we visit the baby on the weekend like it's in prison. And it's, we, we, we put our hands on the glass, we match up hands with the baby to, to make sure we like the baby's vibe. So never know. I just met this baby, I don't know. I might see her, oh my gosh, she got a teardrop tattoo. It's all, oh, do you know Takashi 6 ix 9 This baby's a snitch. And then you put the baby with other babies nobody wants next to counterfeit Super Bowl t-shirts. I didn't know that we had to, you have to take the baby home. Fine, so take the child home. First night at home, uh, my daughter uh, tried to nurse me. <laughs> That's a humbling experience for a man. <laughs> to get nursed unsuccessfully. <laughs> Everybody is frustrated. <laughs> I looked at my wife, I was like, did you just see that? She tried to nurse me. What? You need to lose some weight. Huh? <laughs> no, I am the victim here, did you know that? I've been violated. This is a Me Too situation. Me Too, okay? It's the worst. So my daughter is great, man. She's all, all around. She's rambunctious, asks a lot of questions, man. Very curious, very smart. It's an interesting thing, because the relationship, it does become this part of the bigger 
part of the relationship. Because I've been married almost like nine years now. So people will ask me all the time, oh, nine years? How, how are y'all doing that? Like I'm some marriage oracle. It's, you know, it's not on purpose. I've been married that long because divorce is expensive. That's really what it comes down to. You ever try to Google your way out of marriage? It's, it's very shocking. It snaps you back to reality. You have a couple shaky weekends. Oh, I got to get on the computer. We got to get out of this. $5,000, hey, hey, we got to work this out. We can't afford not to be in love. Did you, did you see that? Oh, we're here. That's why I figured out, man. It's so long term, it's, 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 it's about finding out how to coexist. That's what's, it, love is a very small part of a successful relationship. You know what I mean? Love is just a thing that helps you not kill them in their sleep. That's really what love is. It's about coexisting. It's about finding out what's defective about the person and, and see if you can live with the defect long term. That's, that's why you go on dates and you judge them and you look at them and you say, oh, did our eyes line up? Ah, oh, perfect. It's gone less. Has your dad been in jail? Yeah, I can be a daddy. Yeah, less. <laughs> It's about finding out what's wrong with them, man. And you figure out, there's no perfect people, man. If perfect people existed, it's, we, we wouldn't date. It'd be arranged, man. we all be Mormon right now, dog. It's not the way it works, right? So you try to figure out what's wrong with them. Can I, can I figure it out? Can I live with it? So everybody has some flaws. For instance, personally, I know my wife is a snitch. I know that. <laughs> I know my wife is a snitch because she told me. That's what snitches do. We were watching Making a Murder on Netflix and she, she looked at me, she paused the documentary. She was like, hey, if you ever kill somebody, I tell on you. And it just started back up. It's a weird move. So we don't talk in my house. That's the way it works. I've evolved. Like y'all might have pillow talk. We don't have pillow talk. That is a deposition right there. We, we don't say a word. I go to sleep on the pillow. I, I don't, we sit on the couch, I don't get off the couch, I let her watch whatever weird shows on that night, whatever 90 day, whatever below, we watch that, I don't move. I've been off the couch, it's a bad thing to do. You go to get up, oh, where are you going? Oh, I was gonna get a drink of water. Oh, you wanna go grocery shopping? What, it is seven o'clock, man, what, what, who goes grocery shopping at seven o'clock? What do we, I don't wanna go grocery shopping. Not for you, necessarily. It's, I don't like the way you shop. My, my, my wife goes to three different stores. When she, that's not grocery, that's a scavenger hunt. Like, what are you looking for? One store, that's shopping. If I go grocery shopping, I go to one store. If they ain't got it, we ain't eating. That's the way it works. That's the way you shop. I come home missing ingredients all the time. It's like, oh, where's the hamburger buns? Oh, they hit the grocery store. There was all out of hamburger buns. We ain't gonna have no hamburgers, but now you got to put that ketchup around your fingers, dog. That is the closest you're getting. Ain't you supposed to be keto? <laughs> Stop lying to your friends. You don't need to be in hamburger buns. <laughs> I read the restrictions. So we so we figured all all that stuff out, man. We're good. We're good. We're locked in at this point. We started dating again, which was a weird thing. She told me that we were gonna date again. She was like, hey, I think we should start dating again. I was like, oh, good, yeah, because there were some people I had my eye on, right? It was good. <laughs> Pandemic is getting to you too, man, this is good. <laughs> no, I think we should date each other. Oh, I don't wanna date you. I thought you were talking about date other people. You, you should have said date each other first. I got my hopes up, man. What is <laughs> I already know what's wrong with you. You know what I mean? If we started dating other people, we could figure out what's wrong with them. We could come together and we could laugh about their problems and bring us closer. Let's just go on a date. I was like, okay, let's go on a date. It sounds good. She's like, okay. I was like, all right, let's go. I picked out a restaurant. I was like, let's go. She's like, oh, you got to pick me up. We live in the same house. <laughs> We're going to pick you up. Like, be romantic and pick me up. So you know how hard it is to pick somebody up when you live in the same house? I walked down my step of my house. I walked out of the door. I walked, I got in the driveway in my car. I drove around the block. I parked back in the driveway. You know what I mean? I knocked on my door. Like, I don't know who lives there. I knocked on the door of my house. 
My daughter answered the door. What? Dad, what are you doing? I'm taking mom on a date. That's what I'm doing. Let her know this is a one night stand, by the way. This is the last date. We're done with this. My wife has been through it. I'm definitely not perfect in the game. My biggest flaw, probably the, the worst thing about me, it's like after uh, shows, especially uh, at the late show, I'll do anything after comedy shows. Like, you know what I mean? If somebody's like, hey, you want to, yeah, I'll, yeah, man, let's go, man. That sounds like a good idea. Like, I, I, I went to a strip club after a comedy show. I'm not even a strip club guy, but I, w I went to the, 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 the show. Not a strip club guy, because I uh, don't like giving away my money for free. This is not a big strip club guy. Plus, I got Wi-Fi. And if you got Wi-Fi, you don't need a strip club, you know? Just turn the computer on, throw some money at the screen, pick it up, put it back in your pocket. You know what I mean? It's the same move. When I go to a strip club, I actually, I do take money off the stage. I've done, I've been known to do that. I was at a club one time, stripper pulled a muscle. I was like, yeah, you won't be needing that dollar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll do anything. After one particular show, this is uh, uh, New Year's in, in Seattle. I'll never forget 2016. Now, I'm not a weed guy. But I remember around that time, that's when dispensaries like first hit the streets, okay? So everybody's very interested. I'm not a weed guy. I get paranoid. If it works for you, fantastic. I don't smoke. It's paranoid, it's a terrible experience. So I go into the dispensary with my friends as moral support, okay? <laughs> this guy's trying to sell me. You know, and you walk into a dispensary, it's people weird in dispensary, you know? People take themselves way too seriously in a weed dispensary. There was a dude working there wearing a lab coat. I was like, come on, man. Take that lab coat off. You are a drug dealer, man. Stop it. What kind of high do you want, sir? I don't want to get high. I just came here uh, for more support, you know? When I, when I get high, I, I get paranoid. Well, I got something to fix your paranoia. He opened a drawer. I can fix your paranoia. No, you can't. If, if I get high, I will call the police on everybody in this room. You understand? <laughs> We're going to jail tonight. <laughs> I don't smoke. So, this particular night, hanging out with some comics after the show, and uh, one of the guys uh, looked at me, he's like, and he asked me, hey, Courtney, do you want to do some uh, weed butter? I was like, what, weed butter? I ain't no marijuana made butter, but apparently white people have the recipe. I was like, what? <laughs> you want some butter? I was like, what? And he just pulled it out of his back pocket. It was a weird thing. It was already in a sauce. He was like, hey, some butter. I was like, really? Why is it black? What is going on in there? I got some bread, and then he pulled out uh, some King's Hawaiian Rolls. Oh, man, it's, I love King's Hawaiian Rolls. I, just, I can eat King's Hawaiian Rolls without any butter, you know, like a duck. I could just throw it back dry. But I felt like it was disrespectful to eat all of his bread and not have some of the butter. So I was like, hey, sure, I'll, I'll try that butter out, man. Coat. Great. So then he, uh, he put the butter out there, and I took the roll, and I sopped it up. Got me some edibles. About an hour and a half later, I didn't feel a thing. I was like, oh, this is not that big of a deal. And he came back, hey man, do you want some more of that butter? Sure, I'll take some more of that butter. <laughs> oh, it's the worst decision I ever made. I didn't know the edible rules, man. I didn't know. You do one edible and you wait for the rest of your life for that to kick in. That's the rules. You don't double dip on edibles, okay? You gotta let the first one get a chance to do its damage before you double up on the neck. Cause if the first one finds out you did something with the second one, oh, you went behind my back? Cause all of a sudden it turns into some kind of Mortal Kombat. Finish him! Come here! Boom! All of a sudden the room started shaking back to front. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm in the corner, whopping inside. It's like, I had my arms out. I was trying to, what are you doing? I'm trying to stop this room from shaking, man. This, 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 is, this is terrible. Hey, man, we got to get home now, man. We got to go home. We'll leave in a minute. No, no, I need to go home so I can call the police, dog. This is the worst time of life. It's terrible. Call me an Uber. I took a 45-minute Uber ride three blocks from my house. It's the worst night of my life. I was so high, I thought the driver was following me home. This is how high I was. 
I was like, oh my God, how does he know where I live, man? This is, I'm being kidnapped right now. She was like, hey man, take a left. I was like, oh my God, this is, I should have had a lunch. If I'd have had a lunch, I wouldn't eat so much of that bread, man. This is the worst night of my life. Hey, take a right. This is, this is terrible. I gotta call somebody. You ever been so high? It's like, I gotta call somebody. Like, I don't know, who do you call? But you just, I gotta let somebody know what's going on right now in case I go missing. I need to call somebody. So I called my wife. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey, babe, uh, what are you up to? It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm sleeping. What do you think I'm up to? Oh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to make sure. Um, what are you doing later on tonight? <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna need a ride to the hospital. I think this is the way this night's gonna end. Yeah, there's some edibles at the club. I don't know what's going on right now. I Googled black people with edibles. They're all confused too. So I was just trying to figure out why I can't see right now. Hey man, take a right. I'm being kidnapped, by the way. Yeah, dude from making a murder, he's an Uber driver. This is a weird thing that's going on. Are you high? Yes, I'm high. I'm glad that you asked. And I want him to know that I know that he's, you better not try to kidnap me, dog. Hey, can you, can you stay on the phone till we get home? Just please turn the light on or something. Get home now. She yelled that into the phone. Get home now. I was like, oh, okay, all right, I got it. I turned to the driver. I was like, hey man, uh, we gotta get home. <laughs> Uh, no problem. Get out of the car. Oh, we're here? Have we been parked the entire time? Did you bring me to my house? It's a five-star rating coming your way. Good. I don't know if you ever had, uh, had somebody waiting for you to get home. That, that's, that's a scary experience when someone's waiting for you. You ever go to like put your key in the door and you go to turn, you don't even get a chance to tore the doorknob. Somebody's waiting on the other end to choke the life out of you. And they snatch the door open. As I turned my key, she pulled the door open from the other side. I was so high, I thought I did a magic trick. I was like, ta-da! Oh my gosh, it's you! <laughs> Yes, it's me. Oh man, I thought I'd never see you again. It's good to see you. Oh man, what a night we've had. I cannot believe you did this. She blamed it on me. I cannot believe you did this. What kind of example are you? Can't believe you did this. Disgusting. Where's your shirt, by the way? Oh, my shirt, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I traded in for this coat, you know what I mean? There was, there was trading shirts for coats out there. I was like, oh, my lucky day, I got a shirt on me. So I just traded my uh, shirt for a coat. This has worked out great. That is your coat. Oh, gosh, where's my shirt? Was, somebody stole my shirt, man. It was that Uber driver, I told you, Stephen Avery. He has my shirt. <sighs> well, uh, this is awkward. Um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna need you to give me that ride to the hospital. Yeah, I'm about to die in 15 minutes, I'm pretty convinced. I need to get there before rigor mortis set in. I gotta have some witnesses or something. I'm not giving you a ride to the hospital tonight. Enough of that. I'm not giving you a ride to the hospital. Well, I'm gonna call the police and they gonna give me a ride to the hospital. Somebody's giving me a ride to the hospital tonight. That's the way it's working, okay? I'm not giving you a ride to the hospital. What are you gonna tell them when you get to the hospital? I'm high. Yes, that's exactly what I'm gonna tell them. But this is not the time to keep secrets, you know what I mean? They're gonna know I'm high. I lost my shirt while I was wearing my coat. They're gonna know I'm high. And if I don't tell them I'm high, you're gonna tell them I'm high because you're a snitch. So, let's get right to the hospital. It's been through it. My wife is a champ. The other thing that, that's, that's, that's happened during this time too, I start working on the road in a lot of cities that I don't normally go to, uh, you know, and I'm usually on purpose, you know, but times get tough, you gotta take shows you don't wanna take, you know, no disrespect, but uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, ladies and gentlemen, not a place to vacation. <sighs> I landed in Tulsa. Uh, the meth is free in Tulsa, by the way, in case, you know, 
some drugs you want to get off your head. It's free meth in Tulsa, man. I didn't even know, you know, because when you get to the airport, like in Hawaii, I don't know if you've been like Hawaii, and they will put some flowers around your neck. Oh, welcome to Hawaii, and they throw some flowers on there. Like, Enjoy your vacation. It's not in Tulsa. You land in Tulsa, they hand you a spoon. It's like, hey, enjoy your time. What's the spoon for? Uh, you'll find out. Or put a clean spoon in my back pocket, I'm walking around. Filthy hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma, man. You know a hotel is dirty when you take a shower with your socks on. That is terrible. I got dressed for bed that night. I never got dressed, like Mr. Rogers, put on a sweater. Toss my shoe over my, yeah, this is that kind of night. I remember just going through it. After every comedy show, I got offered meth. Every show, it never failed. I don't know what about me says that guy does meth, but apparently I was giving off a weird vibe, man. I remember uh, the, the lady came up to me, she says, hey, we liked your comedy show. Uh, you wanna go do some meth? Uh, no, I just wanna sell some uh, CDs. Oh, you might like it. Uh, no, uh, I like my teeth. I think I'm gonna pass. <laughs> you should ease up a little bit too. You've had a good time. Last night, I uh, went to uh, went to P.F. Chang's in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes, I did, because uh, I like my Chinese food uh, made by white people. So uh, <laughs> they got good sauce. What can I say? You know what I mean? It's fantastic sauce that they make. You ever you ever go to Chick Fil A? Polynesian sauce. There's not a single Polynesian person working in that place. White people are making that sauce, dude. I just want to break the news. So we go through, and never forget. Um, they had a pet adoption day in front of uh, P.F. Chang's that night. Wow. They did, it was a weird approach they got in Tulsa. I don't know if that's the way they wrote. Cause I, I mean, I'm at P.F. Chang's. I didn't come to adopt a pet, you know? I came uh, to eat a pet. <laughs> this is the reason I'm here. I don't know if it's like a red lobster approach. You get to pick the animal you're about to eat. So like, yeah, yeah, let me have the cat with one leg. I had a big lunch, you know what I mean? Throw them in there. So I'm walking through these uh, pets. It's like going through the Green Mile, right? So I'm walking through the Green Mile, and uh, this lady comes up, and she's like, hey, uh, do you like dogs? And I'm like, oh, uh, they can hear us. Uh, yes, I like dogs. Great! And then she just picked up a dog and tossed it to me. It was just tossed me a full-grown dog. I was furious. I don't know if this dog bites or nothing. I caught it, I was angry. My gut reaction, hit it with an uppercut. No, I didn't do it. I saw a surveillance camera, I was like, oh, huh. that's how they got Ray Rice. I'm, uh, I'm not going out like that. You used to live to see another day, frail Asian woman. Someone's got knocked out in front of P.F. Chang's, you understand? So me and my free dog are walking into P.F. Chang's. They wanted me to pay for the dog. That's when I put my foot down. It's like, I'm not paying for this dog. What if you don't pay for him, we're gonna put him to sleep? I know that's why I'm not paying for him. I'm not paying for an almost dead dog. What kind of business <laughs> transaction is this? If you don't buy it, we're gonna throw him in the trash. I'll wait for the throw him in, I'll fish him out of there. I'm getting this dog for free, okay? So me and my free dog are walking into P.F. Chang's. I sat him at the bar. We got a table. <laughs> I ordered my lettuce wraps. I opened them up. There was some mysterious meat in there. I was like, oh, that, that could have been you. And I rolled it back up. This woman came up to the table, this wait, waitress. She said, how are you guys doing? I'm like, oh, me and my dog, we're doing great. Thank you for asking. She's like, did you need anything? I don't need anything else. And she goes, oh, what brings you to Tulsa? <laughs> you think I'm on vacation? <laughs> it's obviously the money. I was uh, doing some comedy shows up the street. She was like, oh, I'm an entertainer myself. I was like, oh, cool, that sounds good. She was like, yeah, um, I'm actually a stripper. I was like, oh. A stripper with a part-time job? You must be terrible. Uh, you know, I never stripped before, but you know, if you're stripping and you can't make the ends meet, you know, you know, that's God tapping you on the shoulder right there. You know what I mean? Hey, Becky, it's time to hang up the boots. This is not for you. So go finish that nursing degree. You know what I mean? Walk-in clinic in your future. So we leave. Me and my dog walk out of the, the PF chains, and you only see this type of stuff in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We go around the back of the alley. There are two homeless people outside having sex, okay? And let me tell you something about homeless sex, because uh, I watched for a while. Um, that's love. <laughs> I mean, 
a tear came to my eye. You know, this is a beautiful thing. I was like, oh my gosh, they're doing this for me. Uh, no, no, don't stop, continue. I didn't want to interrupt you guys. I appreciate the performance. <laughs> completely naked, by the way, if you're wondering what homeless sex look like, completely naked. When I have sex outside, I normally keep my shirt on, but Winnie the Pooh style. These people, <laughs> naked. This guy came up next to me and started watching his sex with me, which was really uncomfortable, by the way. Because you know? there was plenty of space. There was plenty of space. He could have got a better angle, right? This dude comes up, I'm gonna watch sex with this dude right here, man. Hey, what's up, dog? Like, Whoa, what's going on? He started touching me, this is weird. He tapped me on the shoulder. It's uncomfortable, right? You don't want to be touched when you're watching. Say, hey, man, relax. Like, everybody's gonna get a turn. Relax. Stop touching me, man. Are they allowed to do this? Well, I don't know what they're doing. It. You got a handbook on the outside. Say, this is my first time. Put your mask on. Don't be an animal. Just come on. Enjoy the show. It's a beautiful thing. I called my wife. I was like, hey, baby, you're not gonna believe what I'm watching right now. It's so romantic. She's like, are you watching a notebook without me? <laughs> Close. Uh, there's two homeless people in Tulsa having sex right now. Are you recording it? No, come on, man. This guy next to me is gonna send it to me on Instagram. You know what I mean? <laughs> he won't stop touching me. I think we're married now. I don't know what's going on. You know, me and my dog. Would you do that for me? No, I wouldn't do that for you, you crazy? That's why I asked you that on the first date, you know what I mean? I always throw that question out there. I don't know if y'all do, but you should. You like having sex outside? I just wanna make sure, you know, that I have to buy a house. You know, you never know. Some people sneak through the crack. You, you wanna know, you don't want that home outside sex to get sprung on you one day. You're in front of a red lobster, all of a sudden you gotta make somebody's dreams come true. You don't want that to happen. You gotta ask the question. No, I'm not having sex outside for you. This seems illegal too. You're a snitch. I'm not trying to go to jail to live out your fantasy, man. It's wild, man. You did that. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest, the rest of this thing, man. I think uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep wandering around the internet. It's good to be back in Seattle recording this thing too. When I got to decide where to record, I was like, I definitely want to record it in Seattle. It was like my number one choice. The other cool thing, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You guys are great. The other cool thing is like, you know, it's always better than my first experience here. My first experience here was like the, the, the trippiest experience. I'll, I'll never forget it. The first thing that attracted me to this place is like uh, 15 years ago now. I was 22 years old. And I remember uh, this uh, woman came up to me. I was lo lost downtown. This is back in the day when you could go downtown, you know, without... <laughs> without the heroin, you know what I mean? It's back in the day. And so I remember this lady was like, I was obviously lost. She was like, hey, are you lost? I'm like, yeah, I'm lost. And she was like, well, where are you going? I was like, I'm looking uh, for the comedy club. She's like, oh, I know where that is. Jump on my back, I'll take you there. <laughs> so I jumped on this old woman's back. I was like, oh man, this is great. They ain't even got Uber out here. Just jump on people's back, man. It's the nicest place on earth. That night, hanging out with some dudes. And they're like, hey man, what are you up to tomorrow? I'm like, oh, no, I ain't got nothing to do. It's like, hey, you wanna do, a, we got a benefit show that we have to do and we need another comedian if you wanna do the show. So like, oh, great. It's, it's, they were like, well, where's the show? And it's like, oh, the show's in Bremerton. You gotta remember, I'd never been here before. I didn't know anything about the geography of this place. So I was like, Bremerton, oh, let me pull that up. Oh, that's like a five minute drive. Sure, I'll do this uh, benefit show in Bremerton. And uh, next thing you know, uh, I was on a boat. <laughs> what? I'm on a cruise ship. This is the saddest cruise ship of all time, by the way. I am on a boat, and I grew up in Florida. So most boats I've been on uh, have cocaine. But this boat, it's a dry one. I'm on there, I'm looking around, it's like, wow, it's, just, it's bad. And landed in uh, Bremerton. And I was like, woof, these people do need a benefit. This place is dilapidated. <laughs> So I go to this show. Now, it was a benefit show. I didn't know until we got there. It was for uh, little girls in uh, beauty pageants. That, that was a benefit. So it was like 12-year-old uh, girls, they were all like dressed up like American girl dolls. They looked like adults, it's weird. 
So they came up to me and they was like, hey, thank you for doing our show. I was like, oh, back up. I ain't trying to catch a case. I'm, um, I'm here because your parents are cheap. This is the reason I'm here. This, you know, I got recruited last night, so we just do the show. So I do this show. First time in uh, Seattle. Show starts out, it's great. You know what I mean? Everything is working that night. I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. And then uh, the, uh, uh, I start talking, it's football season, right? So I say, hey, you guys like football? And they're like, yeah, we love football. Ah. And then I was like, yeah, you know, uh, do you, uh, you like the Seahawks? They're like, oh, yeah, we love the Seahawks. Yeah, we can't Hell afford the yeah. tickets, but we love the, watching the games on our tube television. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I'm not a big fan. Boo! Get this jackass off stage right now. Boo! I got booed at a benefit show. You understand? In front of children. I got booed. I had no idea that y'all 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 felt like y'all played for the team. I didn't know the devotion y'all had. Y'all should put that on the pamphlet, man. You can get somebody killed out here. Boo! Get him off of here. This guy charged the stage. I, I'd never been charged on stage before. He was so angry. He was like, if you don't F with the Seahawks, we don't F with you. And he started running on stage. And it threw me off, because he was wearing a Raiders jersey. I was like, what? Dude just came to start a fight. So immediately, I pulled out my knife, you know what I mean? I don't do a benefit show without my knife, you know what I mean? <laughs> These poor people ain't killing me. I pull out this movie show. So the guy tackled him. This happened at the show. A guy tackled him on his way to the stage. And then I had to do 20 more minutes. I was like, oh. <laughs> Act like nothing happened in Roman. Hey, traffic, huh? That's well. <laughs> Terrible. We end the show, and me and the comedians, we get back on the sad cruise ship. Everybody's just trying to figure out what just happened. I was, you know, I got, I'm shell-shocked. I was like, I didn't know. Like, hey, Courtney, what was that? I, was like, I don't know what that was. We were doing a benefit show. It was American Girl Dolls were there. I got charged on stage. I tried to shank a guy, and, and I got $50. I don't know what happened. <laughs> And I walked around this city for the next 10 years after that. And I used to see people wear the number 12 jersey all around this city. I'd never been around some football fan. I see people wearing the number 12. It's a fan is on the back, you know? And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, who the hell is fan? Who is fan? I, I've been to all the games. I never see fan playing. Like, who is this fan? I've looked in the ring of honor. There's no fan up there. Who is fan? Look, this Asian dude must be a baller. Who? I'm confused. I call my brother. I'm like, man, who is fan? Do you know who fan is? He's like, I cheer for the Browns. I don't know what a fan is. I'm like, what? Who is fan? Then one day I'm walking past a Dick Sporting Goods and it hit me. Oh, y'all made a jersey for yourselves. I <laughs> mean, what kind of ego do you have to have? Hey, move over, Russell Wilson. I'm playing quarterback today. I am the fan. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting live comedy. Be safe. You guys take it easy. Peace.